Hello and welcome to a tips and tricks guide to Dead Island 2. Now, one of the early things you can unlock is the kunai, which is throwing three different CDs and slicing people up. One of the things that you may not be immediately obvious to you is that the kunai are extremely powerful and they're really powerful in a certain way. So we have an enemy. Yep, yep, yep. They're jumping all over us. We crouch. We throw the kunai at their legs. And they die. The kunai are great at chopping legs off. Absolutely lethal at the legs. So don't bother trying to throw it at their heads. Trying to hit three in the head. Don't bother with that. Just aim for the legs. And you guarantee you get kills. And that also applies to your melee. So as you battle zombies. One of the easy ways to defeat them. Regardless of whether you're under leveled or not. is to hit the legs, take the legs off, and if their stability is low enough, they're staggered enough, you just stomp the head. Now, for big boys, you can break the arms, you can also break the legs as well. So let's just break the legs. Finish them off. Such a simple thing, you can repeat. Ah, uh, let's just chuck that over there. Yeah, 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 it's fine. Now, the shuriken also work on these guys' legs. They do big damage. And another tip is you can carry over the, the heavy attack charge whilst in the air. So you can dodge his slam attack and smash him in the head with the charge blow. So just a handy little thing if you're having trouble with the crushes. And if you want to use the shuriken, which is an early early unlock at the hotel right at the start. Simple stuff. Let's move on. Uh, the... Oh, Cam bomb's useless. <laughs> the meat bait. Consumable. Let's just go here. Ah, I'm doing this. The meat bait consumable is one of the most powerful consumables in the entire game, and then later on you get a one that replaces that. But it's just absolutely useful. Now, if you hit the enemies that are on the ground chewing on the meat, you'll trigger their aggro. So just go one at a time. Pretty simple stuff. Pretty simple stuff. But it can be paired with a lot of other things so let's check out over here great for distracting runners and then you can line up chop some legs off Using your elements to your advantage, lighting things on fire, <clears throat> all that sort of stuff's great. Just be careful you don't kill yourself. Let's go back in. There's no point using sound to distract enemies. It just doesn't. It's, there's no value in that in this game. You just want to kill them all. Uh, simple tips with the workbench. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Uh, if you want to get rid of a weapon, you've had enough of it, or it's too low level, you can't be bothered paying the price to match the level. I, my recommendation is that you take off the mods, so you remove them, get the resources back, then sell them. Just, I think this is the ideal way to go. You don't get as much money, but at the same time you get the, the materials back and the synthetic thing, the special blue materials. Uh, slightly harder to find early game, and so it just makes it a lot easier. So then you can just go, you see it's got no mods, you sell it, you don't get much money, but it's okay. Early on, that's still a bit of money. 500 bucks. Uh, one of the other things you need to do is, I recommend always buying the fuses when they're there. Even if they are expensive, just because it's good to have a full inventory of fuses. So you can open up the secret doors and get all the rewards and stuff. It just makes the game much more... Uh, it's nice when you have them 
so that you stumble across the special lock and then you go, oh, I've got a fuse. It's just nice. Uh, one of the other things, as you play through, if your money is in a good space, always buy gunpowder and wires. They're the two resources, along with adhesives, that you will run out of. Everything else you're going to get, scrap fasteners, uh, fabric, you're going to get 99 of them. Metal parts, probably 99 as well. So eventually you'll have max of them, and you'll have lots of chemicals and lots of blades. You'll get so many of them that you'll just be missing wires. Wires are used in a lot of crafting, so it is important to keep to keep them. So see, we got wires here. And adhesive used a lot as well, and they're used in high numbers. So whilst you get lots and lots of scrap, I think you can handle that. Your synthetic her, uh, synthetic fibers, you'll find that as you progress, you'll get it from boss monsters. Every boss, uh, crusher, screamer, etc., they always drop synthetic fibers. So you're going to get lots of those. Eventually, you'll have 99 of those. Not a problem. And you get lots of stacks of alloy as well. So you're going to get lots of those. But it's really the... It's really the adhesives... Electronics aren't so bad because, again, you can get those in other ways. But wires, adhesives, they're pretty they are pretty bad. Uh, storage is for all your characters. So as you can see, I've got high-level characters. So you can use it on, you know, to get guns and then you transfer them over to your other characters. And it's just a great way to... See, level 11. So it's a great way to progress through the game. And you get a whole bunch of crappy weapons. You can also grab them and sell them. In your unclaimed property, you can use that to store twice as much, just if you're clever. Uh, do recommend selling rather than scrapping for the most part, because unless it's something good later on, you're not going to get much of it from doing that. Unless it's got a mod and you just don't want to use it, and you just picked it up in the wild, then maybe that's worthwhile. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. So now we've got a bit, fair bit of money. You get plenty of money just by selling items. So picking up the grey ones on the ground is a good way to make money. Again, they sell for more depending on what level they are. So as you progress, even later on in the game, pressing, picking up the white items to selling them, still need you, you know, 500, 600, 700 bucks. So it's still worthwhile to do that later on. To, until you get lots of blues and then lots of superiors and then you're just making bank. Eventually you have stacks and stacks of cash. Uh, skill card tips, there's not a whole lot there. You can have fun, approach the game however you like. Uh, the dodge you get later on, or depending on which characters you choose, is very, very, very powerful. But for the most part, your build early on is not going to be anything like what it is at the late game. At the late game, it's going to be completely different. But you just do what feels fun. It's a hack and slash game. You just have fun, really. That's the big takeaway. Hopefully you do play the game in a way that makes it more fun. So this is my next tip. Do the side quests. That's my recommendation. You do your side quests. That way, as you progress to the next area, you're ready for it. And in this case, we're going to the Beverly Hills. But if you don't, you'll be under leveled. You'll have issues. You won't be able to kill anything. Or it'll take you ages to kill things and it's it can be terribly frustrating especially for a new player you can feel like it's just an unnecessarily excessive struggle and you feel like they're just sponges when really you're under level you need to be you need to do the side quests they're basically mandatory oh, let me just kill this Got the coach's car keys. Oh, I tend to aim a bit too low. Kill as many zombies as you can, I think, within reason. Ah! They don't give you a huge amount of XP, but it does build up. Ah, oh, I missed it. 
Ah, oh, missed it. Uh, get back, get back. Now, dying isn't a big deal. So this is the other thing. You just spawn further back. So don't worry about dying. Um, honestly, just... Yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. Well, at all. It's just, you just get back up and you get back to it. Yeah, this is better. Uh, mix up your combat with heavies and lights. Depending on the mods you've got on, it'll benefit you more. Try and get those perfect dodges, perfect blocks. And in general, just have fun. So, ah. Alright. Uh, I do want to just do that. No, 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 that's fine. Sorry. So, yeah, this has been... Uh, one more thing I'll talk about. Okay, okay. <laughs> I keep thinking about new things as I'm going. But, the challenge menu. So, this is really important. And it may not be immediately obvious. But there are various challenges which provide various bonuses. So if you kill a certain number of zombies, you get boosts to damage. You do the challenges, I mean, you need to get boost to agility, straight up health recovery, you get defensive ones, you get po you get offensive ones. So you get increases to damage. As you play through the game, you do get rewarded for killing lots of zombies. So it is worthwhile to go out of your way to kill them all, whenever you see them. Because eventually you'll be rewarded with these big bonuses and your player will have an enormous amounts of green, like this one. This is only early. It's not like it's got amazing skill cards, but I've got massive bonuses because I have a my first character at max level, and they've got they've done heaps and heaps and heaps of zombie killing. So we've got boost to crit damage, stamina, max, peak health, health recovery, toughness, agility, resilience, and status resist. So I take less damage from you know fire and electricity and chemicals and stuff. So there is a meta progression. So it is worthwhile to look at the challenges and go, what do I need to use next? What weapons I need to use? I'm going to get more maiming kills. More headhunt. use weapon types. So each weapon has a type. So this one's a maiming type weapon. So it gives you kills for that. And then once you get up, you do more maim damage. Weapons with these. You more damage with each of the classes. You get a headhunter. Bulldozer. It's more maiming. So, it is worthwhile if you stick with one type early on, and then you get the damage up, that's great. But I do think just vary it up, try different weapons. Just go through, do a look at the challenges, look at the zombie challenges, different zombie types. You want to target, so you want to get the health recoveries, so you want to get peak health. Maybe you'll find farming spots, you just want to farm certain zombies early on, just to get a, a head. Or just get some resist, resilience, status defense stuff. Yeah, so it's, it is worthwhile to slaughter everything, do your side quests so you're the right level. Otherwise, when you go to a new zone, I'll show you, Let's travel over there. You'll find enemies with a skull on the head and they insta kill you and it's not fun. So, the other part to that, oh God, I feel like this just keeps going, it does Uh, let's grab everything here. Blah, 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 blah. Michael's playing with fire out here. I think he needs a visit from reality check. So you see these enemies have a skull on their head? Because they don't want you going over that direction.
be wary. Enemies with the skull are deadly. I don't recommend just charging through, rushing through the game and trying to get past them. Take your time, do your side quests. You won't be under level. You'll be at the right level. You'll have more fun. Maybe it's on the map. I'll show you that the, the one shot. I think that's probably that's important. Let's jump in. See? One shot. So just avoid that. Or you can just plow through and just, you know, bang your head against the brick wall. You know, you can do what you like in that regard. You can take it as a challenge or you can actually play the game in a way that makes some sort of sense. Do the side quest, be the right nice level, kill a lot of zombies. Here, Get your bonuses from your challenges. Have huge bonuses to your character. Trade weapons between your characters if you, if you feel it suits one over the other. And you can also use that to make a huge amount of money. So you just trade a whole bunch of crap weapons, put them in the storage, and then a new character can grab those and sell them, and then they've got stacks of cash early on. Makes the game a lot easier. But yeah, hopefully it's been helpful. Hopefully you learned something. If you did not, or you you know have any other tips, tell me in the comments. Let me get these guys. Look at these guys. Look at him. Look at him. Insta kill. So that uh, shuriken to the, the knees, that works against pretty much every enemy in the game. Yeah, every enemy in the game. And the recharge is pretty quick, so. Uh, one. Let me jump over here. I can't jump over. One of the quick notes I want to say is that one of the challenges is it doesn't work correctly. Uh, weapon challenge. Yep. So the curveball damage only applies to certain curveball items. And really the shuriken is the most consistent. So some of them don't actually work. So the, what kills the enemy is not the curveball itself. What kills them is... So, in other words, the chem bomb, you can't get kills with the chem bomb. You apply wetness or traumatize, and uh, traumatize, but it doesn't actually kill them. So only the shuriken is consistent in terms of actually getting kills on that challenge. That's why I haven't even got it done yet, because it's so, because it's not, it's not correct. So the pipe bombs don't get it, don't need to get any progression. Grenades and things later on don't get any progression. So just keep an eye on that one. Use the shurikens, throw out the, the knees. Get that racked up early. That, that'll help you a lot. Because as you see, the damage I do have, it is boosted. So that's part of why I, I do so much damage. I, was, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said that I could, you could do that straight away. Because again, there's an accumulation amongst multiple characters. And there's a zombie right there. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, have fun in the game. Don't make it too much of a struggle by not doing the side quest and making it seem like the game is at fault when it's not at fault. It's designed in that way. Mix it up with the weapons and you know play with variety in mind from your play style rather than anything else. And um, try to have fun. Or you will have fun, come on. Yeah, it's been Frosty by 10. Uh, like and subscribe and um, leave a comment and stuff. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.